Hello, hi y'all. Thank you for clicking on my video and coming to my channel. Um, I hope that you all are having a wonderful day today. I wanted to make a video about like dealing with injuries as an artist and coping with like that pain and that struggle like not just the physical pain of the injury but also the emotional and the mental pain that those injuries can kind of spawn and i also wanted to talk about a loss of identity as well um sometimes those injuries can cause an artist to not be able to create and as an artist i think at least me i guess i can speak for myself only um but i think many artists feel this way we put so much of our value and who we are as a person into our artwork it is so important to us it's in a way like the reason that we live. It's the thing that makes us the most happiest in the world is to be able to create. And when that is taken away from you and you are not able to create the way that you normally would, there's this like loss of identity in who you are. There's this sadness that comes upon you um and just like this void in this emptiness in this emptiness and it's something that like i've really been struggling with the past couple months and i wanted to just do a video because i've had to really learn ways of how to cope with it and cope through it and heal um, and I just wanted to do a video because I know I'm not the only person dealing with something like this um, or who will ever deal with something like this. Our experiences, the things that we deal with in our life are not only happening to us, but they happen to so many other people in the world as well. And when we share those experiences, um, it can make the world feel less big and overwhelming and um, make a person just feel more connected and, and loved and not lonely in such a big space. So yeah, if, if you're dealing with something like that or anything, um, I'm gonna be talking about that in this video. So yeah, if you're interested, then please keep watching. So I, like many other artists have been drawing since I was a wee little baby, a tiny little baby. Um, I remember like the first drawing I ever made was, of, or that I can remember ever making, was this meadow with like sunflowers and stuff in it and bees. And I had two pairs of eyes in the sky and um, I just loved it. Like I thought it was such a pretty piece that I had made and it made me so happy to know that I created it. It's funny because like I still very much make artwork like that. I love bees. Like bees are one of my favorite insects. I love meadows and flowers. I'm a very spiritual girl so the eyes kind of remind me of like type of like spirit or entity that is looking over the bees in the meadow and so the piece is just very, I think, representative of me as like a being, I guess, because my art has just been pretty consistent. Like what I draw, what I like to draw, how I like to draw it, like has been really consistent throughout my life. Um, so yeah, yeah, as I said, I just love art. It has always been such a safe space for me. I am someone that's like really sensitive. I'm very empathetic and I have been really my whole life, um, I tend to put emotions into things that sometimes don't even need to have emotions. 
in them. I am definitely the person that's gonna boohoo in a movie. I'll boohoo in a commercial. I'll boohoo pretty much about anything. If I see another person crying, I'm probably going to start crying. It's just, uh, I'm just a very emotional and sensitive person. And when I was little, that was really tough because I felt like the heaviness of the world and I would dwell on all of the sad things that happened. Like it seemed like the sadness in the world was just heavier than the goodness. And um, I was just like a really depressed little girl. I was really sad a lot. And um, art was the place that I could go and zone everything out. Like nothing mattered when I was drawing or painting. Um, nothing else existed. Any worry that I had, any pain that I had, it all just went away when I drew. And I would be stuck in my sketchbook for hours, just on end, just drawing. And I would just, be silent in my room drawing. That was my thing. That was how I spent the majority of my childhood. It was just my little cocoon, my nest that I could go into and um, nothing else mattered. And I never really thought about the possibility of not being able to go to that safe space or the possibility of that safe space no longer being a place of like joy, but actually a place where I feel pain. Um, you know, like I thought about the possibility of not being able, of, of like something happening and not being able to draw or something like that. But it was just like a ghost of a thought and never stayed um, until this year. This year, I had a pretty weird injury. I won't get all into it because it's such a long story, um, but I ended up causing injury to my spine. And I'm someone that has scoliosis. So if you don't know what scoliosis is, it's where your spine isn't straight, um, but it's curved and so my spine kind of looks a little bit like an S. And um, and I've known that I've had scoliosis since I was little. And other than a little bit of like muscle pain, it's never caused me too much uh, problems. I can really do pretty much everything else that a person without scoliosis can do. Um, or so I thought. <laughs> so I thought. Um, but yeah, I ended up hurting my spine. I hurt like my mid back um, and also my neck and so right now I'm like kind of um, nursing or managing with the pain of um, a bruise on my mid back and then a um, they call it cervical instability or cervical laxity in the neck and so that's basically having a sprained neck so the ligaments in my neck are loose right now they're not on like they should be and it causes a lot of pain um i've definitely healed through these past months when it first happened it hurt like fucking hell oh my god it hurt so bad yeah like if you've ever had like a sprained ankle or a sprained wrist it is it oh god it's terrible and then to have that in your neck i thought i was dying like i genuinely thought that it was the end i was oh it was terrible um because that like having an injury in your neck is not like having an injury like in your finger or your toe or your ankle or something like that like it impacts your whole entire body and severe neck injuries can cause neurological problems. It can cause you know, someone being paralyzed and 
it can cause death. Like it can cause so many different things. And I'm so thankful that it was not, you know, to that point. Um, but it did cause me to have nerve pain and an inability to use like certain parts of my body for a while. Um, I would have excruciating nerve pain throughout my legs, my arms, I'd feel it in my head, behind my eyes, it was just terrible. And when people say that like they feel lightning through their body or there's this burning, aching sensation, like you hear that, but you don't really know what it feels like until it happens. Like I have a cousin who unfortunately suffers from sciatica and um you know and i know how how much it hurts her like she's not able to walk too long um sometimes even sitting you know aggravates it like anything can really aggravate it and i knew that i was aware of it but it's one of those things like until you feel that nerve pain you don't understand it's not something that you can just turn off you, or you can just like mentally think yourself out as it's excruciating and um my heart goes out to anyone in the world who suffers from uh chronic nerve pain thankfully that is not something that um i'm dealing with I, at least i hope not i feel like my injury has healed remarkably um within the past few months um but i know that it's something that can sometimes stay with folks and it can be very debilitating and as i said my injury i felt it because it was in my neck i felt it throughout my entire body and it really in fact it impacted the way that i was able to use my hands um there was a period of time where I wasn't able to work because I couldn't even type on a computer. My hand would literally cramp up. Like I would feel the pain start in my knuckles and it would go all the way up into my wrist, my forearm, my elbows, my shoulder, and it would just cramp up and, and it was so painful. And I spent a lot of nights crying because I was like, how am I ever going to be able to draw again? How am I ever going to be able to create again if I can barely type on the computer without cramping and without camping? Because as I said prior, I could, I could draw for hours and hours and hours and I never felt pain. Like sometimes, I would feel a little bit of tension in my knuckles, but nothing, um, nothing like monumental. Whereas this, I could barely write for a minute without having to put my pen down because it hurt. And so I dealt with a lot of, of sadness. I had a lot of depression because the very thing that like I love I'll say one of the things that I love the most in the world. There are a lot of things that I love, but one of the things that I love the most in the world is in one of the things that I go to to seek freedom and happiness and joy and euphoria is the very thing that now is bringing me pain. And it was something that I had to learn to cope through um, because so much of my identity was also inside of my artwork. It was like, who am I without being an artist? Life just like did not feel as beautiful um, to live in or exist in. And that was a struggle for me. A, a big struggle for me and I had to learn that I was more than just my artwork or my ability or my talent or my gift I had to learn that 
even without my artistic ability, I was still valuable because I put so much value into the fact that like I could draw or that I can paint really well. That was where I kind of like would validate my own self as a being. And I think that's something that we all have. We all have like some trait in us that we hold to a different esteem than other traits. Um, either it's like, oh, we're a really caring person or we're a really funny person or we're really good at cooking. I don't know, <laughs> like it could be anything. Um, that we hold a lot of value in within ourselves and we put our identity into it. And when something happens, when we can no longer do that thing, thing sometimes we feel like really lost. Um, and not like worth it in a way. And, um, yeah, that was like really hard for me and it's something that I'm still dealing with because, you know, I can't, I'm 24 years old. So something that I've been doing for 20 plus years of my life, which is putting my value of a person into my artwork um, or putting my artwork into the value of myself, is not something that I can just change in a couple months, but it is something that I'm trying to learn to do and to learn that like, I am an artist. So much of my artwork is myself, but my artwork is not me. It's not, it doesn't make up Desmond. It doesn't make up my identity. I, myself, as a being, purely as a soul, is my identity. And then even then it gets to a point of like, what is identity? Like what is the self? Because when you get into like things like Buddhism and stuff, they have the ideology that there is no such thing as the self and that you shouldn't superimpose any action or behavior or thought onto anything. Because at the end of the day, that action or thought is not who that thing essentially is in a way and so yeah it's just been it's been a bit of a journey but i just wanted to come on here because as i said i know i'm not the only person the only um person who is having struggles with doing their passion and um Luckily, I have been able to heal pretty well, which I'm very thankful for that. Um, it's been a long journey, um, usually sprains, at least what I read on Google, I don't know. Um, it's, on Google, it said they go away within four to six weeks. Mine has been here far longer than four to six weeks, um, but I have definitely seen like immense growth and healing. So I'm very thankful for that. I did want to talk about some ways that like I also physically cope with the pain. And so um, I'll start with wearing like support garments. So when the injury first happened, I had a neck brace that I wore and I wore it all the time. Like I could not do anything without that neck brace. Um, I slept in it. And the only thing I didn't do was take a shower. Um, now I'm more so wearing my neck brace if I'm out and about and doing things, like if I'm in a car or something, I'll wear my neck brace or if I'm sitting for really long periods of time. So whenever I'm doing my art, I'll wear my neck brace because I, I don't know why, but when I sit, the injury feels worse. Like right now it's really hot in my neck right now. Um, and it's, it's a bit burning and aching right now. But like if I were to stand or something, that ache would go away. Um, I don't know why that is, 
but uh, but yeah so if I'm sitting for long periods of time when I'm doing art I'll put on my neck brace and I can go for a longer period of time um, without having too much pain or too much uncomfortability within like my neck my back and um, my hands another thing that I've added is compression gloves now I don't know maybe it's because my injury is not necessarily to my wrist or my hands themselves but to my neck that I don't know if compression gloves are actually working for me like I, I see a lot of things on TikTok and YouTube and stuff of people being like compression gloves compression gloves and I'm very much a placebo person like if if you give me like a mocktail but tell me that there's alcohol in it and I don't know it's a mocktail I, I'm probably gonna be that person that's like oh I feel it da, da, da. and it's it's not even there's no alcohol in it and that's just that's just how I am I'm very very placebo so um sometimes when I wear it I'm like oh yeah it's working it's doing its thing but then I think about it and then I'm like I I don't know I don't know if it's actually doing much of anything because it's supposed to help with like swelling and to be honest I don't really have a lot of swelling in my hands whenever I do my art it's more so my knuckles just hurting or being stiff so um compression gloves may help like if you're someone that is an artist who's dealing with an injury hand pain compression gloves may help you however i i can't say that they've necessarily helped me too much um another thing that i really like to do are epsom salt baths now those epsom salt baths are amazing like if you have any stiffness or tightness in your body, if you just draw some hot water, put Epsom salt in there and just soak, it feels so good. Yeah. Another thing, and this is the hardest thing that I've had to like add into my process, my artistic process is taking breaks. So I tend to get into the zone <laughs> whenever I'm creating art. And I just, yeah, nothing matters. I'm not hungry. I don't need to use the restroom. I'm good. But I can't do that now because if I go for too, too long, then I feel a lot of pain in my body. So I take rest. And I like to rest every like 45 minutes. Um, I like to just stop and give my hands and my body a bit of a break, uh, stretch a little bit. Um, just giving my body time to relax because when you're drawing it's, it doesn't feel like it but you're really putting your body under so much tension like your muscles not just in your hands but throughout this whole entire region of your body all the way into your neck are working really hard to be able to just have your hand in your paintbrush put a stroke on a canvas and so taking breaks is quite essential to like reducing that pain and has helped me like that has helped me a lot um i'll even you know take breaks for days whereas like prior i would draw every single day um because it's just a, a thing that i love to do <laughs> And so I would draw every single day, but that's something that I can't really do anymore. Um, I have to take breaks. So that having rest days, giving myself time to, it giving my muscles time to heal has been really helpful and like minimizing that pain. And I think has helped me on this healing journey. This is something that's also really important that like as an artist, we tend to already do, um, but being mindful of how you hold the pencil or the brush that you're using, because if you're holding it really, like if you're holding the pencil or the brush closer to the tip, you tend to put more pressure and you tend to have like a harder line. Whereas if you hold the pencil or brush from the back, it's more loose, you have a looser grip, it's not as tight. 
and you're able to render things more loosely and with a lighter hand. And I've been more mindful of that, um, holding the pencil from the back rather than the front. Even when I am trying to do like a heavier line, um, I, I'm kind of learning how to render things tightly while still holding the back of the pencil or the back of the brush. And so that has been something that has been very helpful, like physically. And then mentally, the things that I talked about earlier, just rewiring my brain to not look at my art as my identity and to still find happiness in the other things that life brings. Um, not holding art to a higher esteem than other things in my life that deserve love and appreciation. Focusing on that, focusing on my spirituality, focusing on the things that I can do has been really helpful for me. Spending time with family, spending time with my friends, going out in nature, and just watching TV also. <laughs> I like am not a big TV watcher, but I have been these past couple months. And watching TV has actually been extremely helpful for me because my brain gets lost in the story of the show or the movie that I'm watching and I'm not so focused on whatever pain it is that I'm dealing with in my like body and that has been really helpful which I, I would in the past like have never advocated oh go seek escapism from watching tv but now that I've had this experience <laughs> I I'm kind of advocating for that I just Hope that this video helps someone who may possibly be dealing with something similar. Know that you are so much more than what you create. That yes, your creation, your artwork is beautiful and deserving of recognition, but that your value as a person is so much greater than what it is you can do with your hands or what it is you can give to the world. Yeah, I hope that that was helpful. And even if you're not an artist, I hope that this um, was something that was helpful. It's helped me in the therapeutic way of just being able to release it and talk it out. Um, but yeah, thank you. I hope you have a good day.